Hi, this is your host Swapnil Bharti and welcome to TFI Success Stories, a show where we talk to organizations who are leveraging open source technology and Linode technologies to serve their own customers. And in today's episode, we have with us Rock DeWalked, CTO and co-founder of SimSage. Rock, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you, Swapnil. Very nice to be here. You were fascinated with computers from the early age. So I want to learn about uh, when and how you got fascinated with computers and what aspect of computing attracted you. So from an early age, like uh, most people of my generation, in the 80s, we got the start of these home computers. And um, also at the same time, I was learning foreign languages because living in Europe, like Dutch, German, French, and English. So the combination, I, I seem to be a natural at uh, writing software and I really loved computer languages and, and, and human languages. Let's talk about SimSage. What exactly does the company do? What, I mean, we talked about your fascination. Let's talk about how you turn that fascination into a solution that is not helping just your passion, but you're helping organizations and their employees. We formed SimSage in 2008, Sean Wilson and myself, my business partner. Um, so I have all the, I had all these ideas on how to solve these difficult problems, but of course you can't just be a science project, right? You can't just come up with a solution without having a, a real problem. So the first obvious step was to apply to search because there's so much information out there and the old keyword search is just reaching at limit, its limits, you know, even on Google, if you have. Uh, you know, uh, over a trillion pages. If you type any word, you're going to get millions of hits regardless. So it becomes more about accuracy than it becomes about the older techniques of keyword search. So how different is that from a regular search engine, which also kind of goes through every text in a document and shows it? It is quite different. Um, there are actually a few competitors that, that are starting to look at similar problems. Like um, I think Amazon's Kendra, but they're using a different technique. Um, How's it different? Well, it's very different from keyword search um, because in keyword search, you just look for hits. You look for the exact words or even semantic search, which is an, an, an enhancement of keyword search. You look for uh, perhaps synonyms, related words to the keyword you've just typed. But um, let me give you an example, right? If I were to say, um, if I were to search for, for instance, what is the population of Cornwall or how many people live in Cornwall, the keywords for those are actually quite different, but the meaning of the two is almost identical. And that's something you can't do with keywords or semantic search, but you can with um, this natural language understanding. Now let's talk about the kind of infrastructural or technical needs you have. So talk about the back end of whatever you can share safely that how do you process all of that? What kind of infrastructure you need to be able to run SimSage successfully? SimSage is a software as a service platform. Um, and we run Kubernetes to, to, to host all our um, information. We, we actually are a, a big data store, if you like. We use um, something Netflix uses as well called Apache Cassandra for our database, which can store millions and millions and millions of items and is linearly scalable. So, you know, we, we just add some more um, line notes and we get more power. Um, but, you know, for us, it was really important that the infrastructure be simple and um, easy to manage. And of course, we, we use Linux for everything. So line note was a really natural choice for us. Tell us in what capacity are you leveraging? You said you are a software as a service, so which I'm assuming that your whole infrastructure, your own workloads are running on Linode. Uh, Linode, they of course offer Kubernetes, they also offer object storage. Um, you said you are leveraging Cassandra. They also offer a GPU for AI ML workloads. So talk, talk about which, are, which of the Linode technologies and services you are tapping into for SimSage. For SimSage, we use um, GPUs. So we use that for our um, basically creating the vectors from text. So basically turning the text into magic numbers that give us semantic meaning. Um, we used the Kubernetes technologies and we used the normal line notes as well for um, shared uh, workload between the different clusters. Um, our, our software, so software as a service platform, is a um, multi-tenanted platform. So we can have many customers on in our software. So you are literally tapping into almost everything that Linode is offering there. We started using Linode and um, so 
previously we were with um, Google Cloud, but um, it was really hard to get hold of anybody and um, it was a lot more expensive than LineNote as well. So with LineNote, um, we were just surprised. You know, we, we got a personal uh, a success manager just like that. Um, and um, we entered their partner program. It's, it's just fantastic. Um, the GPU, um, we weren't using yet at that time when we switched from Google Cloud to, to Linode, but um, we are using it now. Uh, you did give a reason why you moved from Google to Linode. Uh, what, are the, what were the other factors that contributed towards this move? And how did you kind of evaluate that, hey, Linode is the right choice for us? Um, for us as a startup, um, it, cash flow is really critical. So um, Google was just very expensive for us, especially as you started up more and more clusters to demonstrate and to um, basically approach customers. So when we looked at Linode, first of all, it was a lot cheaper, half price of what Google Cloud was. And um, the moment we, we engaged with the Linode people, we just got all the help we needed. It was fantastic. And one of the things that I like about them is that their support, they have real people, not the chatbots. Uh, Sometimes interfaces also play a very big role. I don't want to name any cloud company, but if you do want to get the service, you need to be a mathematician, not only to calculate all the costs <laughs> associated, but what services you really want. Uh, of course, cost is a factor. And third thing is that you don't want a kind of vendor lock-in and you want to be able to leverage uh, latest uh, buzzwords like you know the kubernetes comes in gpu comes in so you want to work with a company which is moving with their customers wherever the customers are in their journey linode will be there with them so these are the what are the other factors other than cost you mentioned you mentioned support that help you in choosing linode it's kind of ironic, right? Because we are an artificial intelligence company ourselves. So <laughs> indeed, dealing with people is really important to us. Because so our, our technology as well, it, it doesn't replace people. It helps people. So we, we, honestly, I, I found that um, a lot of these bots and online systems just aren't very helpful to us. Um, and that's what really impressed me with Linode is that um, our, custom, our customer success manager just made it real easy for us. Um, interfaces, um, natural interfaces. For me as a programmer, um, Linux is natural and Linode is natural. Whereas, you know, in, in the other platforms, and we use about three different platforms before, um, everything is abstracted. Um, it's hard to find things. And um, I won't name anybody, but some of them are almost a work of art as opposed to um, a, a human interface. As you mentioned that you were uh, using Linode before they introduced GPUs, and then when GPUs were introduced, of course, uh, that is a critical piece of AI ML workloads uh, that help you in, uh, in kind of uh, leveraging those technologies. So can you also talk about that aspect where uh, Linode is kind of helping you grow uh, not only your business, your, your clientele, but also your innovation. You don't have to stop just because Linode may or may not have that. So when we started looking at Linode, so after I decided it was time to move, um, I, I, I immediately fell in love with it. So um, so first of all, it was all Linux. And, and of course, that I'm, I'm a big fan. So um, that, that was point number one. But um, then, then I found out they did GPUs, which is great. And then I found out they did Kubernetes and uh, all the storage stuff is there and it was, all done automatically. It was it was really quite amazing, you know. But when I start up a Kubernetes node, and it's got a, a, a volume attached, even though the volume shows is different, the, the node automatically knows that it's attached to that particular volume. It was just magic. It, it, it all worked. You are offering it as software as a service. So how do companies, your clients, your customers, uh, either plug into your system? How do they use your technologies or services? So um, for uh, not, not everybody's moved to the cloud yet, but of course we, we are set on using the cloud. So we have something called a, a, an edge device. This, this tiny little box is a tiny little Raspberry Pi computer in, inside a very special case with our own software on it. And these little devices, we offer the customers to put inside their own organizations. They're completely in charge of this and they can use our cloud interfaces to instruct this box to gather information on, 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 on their behalf 
and make it accessible. So that's what we do for uh, in, inside organizations. Um, those organizations that are already in the cloud, of course, is a little bit easier. We can just make connections from our, from the line of cloud to whatever cloud they're in. And um, the interfaces, um, they're, they're just all web interfaces, interfaces we use. It depends on what kind of industry or market you cater to. Uh, there may be some industries uh, which do care about privacy, especially in Europe, privacy is a very you know, crucial. You may also work with industries, they have to comply with some you know, uh, regulation and compliance. If you do work with such clients, how do you ensure that while you they are able to plug into your system and share information, at the same time, they do not you know, kind of uh, they they may remain uh, comply to all, all the local laws and regulations. So one of the services we offer is a discovery service where we actually um, alert customers about GDPR compliance, right? So we go through the documents, um, and so so first of all, um, everything is as secure as we can make it. Like we use um, what's called transport security, so HTTPS, but we always always use um, message encryption as well. So Basically, we encrypt everything twice, and everything is encrypted at rest on on, on our um, platform, cloud platform. Um, yeah. So, if I'm not wrong, SimStage, you know, your customer base is global. Uh, Lenovo, they have their own data centers across the across the globe, especially in a very strategic places. You know, they have in India and all those places. So, talk about how is that aspect helping you to serve your customers better? It could be either for the legal uh, regulation reason, or it could also be about the latency. So, Linux has helped us um, address different geographical locations. In our example, we are in um, in New Zealand because we're a New Zealand company first. Um, so we have a da- we're using the, uh, Linode in Sydney, and we're also because we're currently located in London for the bigger market, um, we are in London and Frankfurt in in Europe. Rock, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about not only uh, natural language processing, uh, how you turn your passion into this company, but also how you're using all these latest technology, whether it's Kubernetes, whether it's GPUs, whether it's Cassandra, most of these or almost all of these are open source technologies uh, to serve your customers. Uh, I love the conversation and I look forward to talk to you again uh, whenever there is an update with the company. So once again, thank you. Thank you, Stockman. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs>